Welcome to the Net Bible Church YouTube channel. If you haven't done so, please hit the subscribe button and click the bell to be notified of our new uploads. If you'd like more information about the Net Bible Church or how you could donate, please click on the link below. Thank you so much for watching. We just praise you, Jesus, for all that you've done. You've done because of your great love for mankind. Thank you, Lord God. We're so thankful thankful and grateful for what you have done that no one else could ever do you paid the price with your life with your blood to cleanse us from all unrighteousness for whosoever believes and calls on the name of jesus shall be saved oh thank you jesus we thank you, Jesus, that you are the Lord. You are Lord of Lords. You are the King of Kings. You are the great I am. You are the Word made flesh. You were, you are, and you will always remain the same. With all power and mercy, love and compassion, that you are reaching out to mankind morning, noon, and night on every continent of this earth reaching out towards mankind to turn from their wicked ways, lay down their life, and to pick up their cross. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, creator, creator of heaven and earth that you fearfully and wonderfully made us, that we would bring joy to you as you have brought joy to us. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, let my life and everything I do bring joy to you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We want our lives to bring joy to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. The word of God is very plain. It says, find out what pleases the Lord. There's lots of things that we could read and find out about in the word of God where it says what pleases God and things that don't please him. Amen. We want to make sure we're in the lane of pleasuring God. Amen. That we bring pleasure and honor and praise and adoration to him. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you may go ahead and be seated. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. You know, it's absolutely true. Um, no matter what uh, people might think or teach or the word of God is, it is absolute. Amen. And, um, the word of God says that God is love. Therefore, God cannot love you any more ever than he does right now. God can't love us anymore. No matter how good or bad we behave, God's love is always the same. Amen. And salvation was paid for in full by Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago. So there's nothing that we can do to pay for salvation. It is ours because Jesus paid for it that we could obtain salvation by believing, amen, in our heart and confessing with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. Amen. There's, there's uh, so many different denominations and um, people claiming to or claiming that we have to earn God's love or earn our salvation but the fact is we can never earn God's love and never earn salvation they are free gifts of God amen hallelujah but what we do with that salvation amen is a whole nother a whole nother story. Amen. And it's up to each individual to make those decisions, um, make those decisions for ourselves because God has given, he, when he created mankind, we were born with a free will. That's why things are so jacked up. <laughs> a free will has gotten a lot of people into trouble, but God wants us to use the gift that he gave us of a free will to willingly serve him. Amen. 
And um, because he so loves us, uh, I, I saw something just posted on a social media by Mark Hankins. And he said, if you knew what was on the other side of that mountain, you'd move it. <laughs> he says, if you knew what was on the other side of the mountain, I mean, we all got mountains in our lives. And most of us just make mountains out of molehills. It's just a molehill. <laughs> but we make a mountain out of it. And uh, I was thinking th uh, the other day, um, there's a lot of great spots when you go to you know, you can go to beaches along here, beaches in Hawaii, and I uh, think it's kind of strange how there's always kind of mountains around. <laughs> and um, do you ever notice when you go to the beach that nobody's facing the mountains? They're always facing the open sea. And I just thought about that. How funny that if you went to the beach that everybody had their chairs turned around instead of facing the beach, they were just all sitting there looking at the mountains. <laughs> We're not made to look at mountains. We're made to rebuke mountains. Amen? Resist mountains. And, and look what God has out in front of us. Amen? And um, one of the things we have to understand that faith, according to God's word, absolutely moves mountains. Faith is what we get saved by. A lot of people don't like the subject of faith. <laughs> we love the subject of faith because you're saved by faith. Amen. We are saved by faith. And it's not of our own. It's a gift of God. God gives us enough faith to get saved. A mustard seed of faith so we can get saved. Amen. And uh, what we do with that mustard seed is totally up to us because we have a free will whether we're going to nurture that seed let that seed develop and grow and get stronger. And um, it's just like anything. It, it has to be exercised. Faith has to be exercised to become bigger and stronger. And it's not, um, and um, when, when we were out of town, I was telling Rev G one morning, you know, when I get up in prayer and God would show me things. And so I was telling him about how <clears throat> the Lord, for some reason, was bringing back like my first my first few years of when I was walking with God and how I had such childlike faith. I mean, I was, I was just daring with my faith. I was like, well, God, if this is your will, <laughs> then you're going to have to pay for it. And God, if this is your will, <clears throat> if, if I'm going to have to Moved to North Carolina. Obviously, I have to have a place to live. And I would really like to have an apartment with a loft. I didn't even know where I came up with that. <laughs> I want a loft. I want a terrace. I wanted a loft. And I ended up with a loft. And the Lord walked me in my childlike faith where I could just... And the Bible says that we can test God in these things. In, in our faith, test God in our giving and in doing, amen? And God was so faithful, even in my, my naivety. <laughs> but God brought these things back to me and showed me how, how daring I was with my faith and that I need to be more daring again, amen? I know more, and I should be more daring. And how we can... Um, how if we're going to live by faith, and, and, and Jesus said, Jesus, the King of glory, said that we're supposed to use our faith to move mountains. Amen. And if we can move a mountain, we can certainly move a molehill. Amen. Sometimes you have to practice on the anthills, and then you can practice on the molehills, and then... <laughs> You know, you're like, if God gave me the anthill and God gave me the molehill, he's certainly going to give me this mountain. <laughs> Amen. But an understanding that um, um, God is commanding the church to move mountains instead of letting those obstacles. A, mount, a mountain is something that's in your way. And the reason Jesus used the word mountain, because it looks immovable. Hear closely, when Jesus said, amen, when Jesus said 
to move the mountain. He, he used it for a very specific purpose. Amen? Let's look at, let's look at Mark 11 and 22. He could have used a lot of things as an example, but he chose to use a mountain because he's not talking about a physical mountain. Amen? Though if it had to move, you could move it. But he's talking about something here in, in uh, Mark eleven twenty two. <laughs> God, you're awesome. It says, have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly, I tell you, if, if anyone says to this mountain, go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what, he, what they say, if he believes that what they say, if he believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. So he used the word mountain because each and every one of us through all of history have certain times in our life where we're facing something that seems immovable. I don't care if it's sick. It could be a doctor's report, a bad report from the doctor. It could be a bad report. It, it could be a financial situation. It could be a family situation. But it looks impossible to move. So Jesus gave an example of something that was impossible to move. So that we could know that the impossible can be done. And whatever, and, and whatever is standing in your way from living the God kind of life is either an anthill, a mohill, or a mountain. And should be cast out of the way. But he said right here that if you don't doubt in your heart, remember the scripture we talked about when, when Jesus said, why are you so afraid? You have little faith. That means wavering back and forth. Amen. God is so good. We can't even imagine. Amen. Hallelujah. In, in James 1 verse Five, it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. This is James 1, 5. And it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. That's brackish. You got belief and unbelief, doubt and unbelief, and faith, thinking, wondering, knowing, and believing, all mess messed up in your head. But it says, but when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Don't be afraid. Don't doubt. You must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. So we got to get a grip <laughs> on our faith and get rid of all doubt and fear and wondering. <laughs> how many times do you speak to a mountain and then you're wondering how it's going to move? We should know exactly how it's going to move by the power of our words in the name of Jesus. That's how it's going to move. I wonder if God's going to use this person. I wonder if God's going to do this. I wonder that that's brackish water. You got faith and fear all swimming around each other. <laughs> you could know how to swim, but if you get afraid, you're going down. Ask any swimmer. You start getting afraid when you're in the water and you start thinking about what's underneath you and how deep it is. And you start all of a sudden thinking, I don't think I can swim to get to something to hang on to. And fear and panic sets in. You're going down. 
there was a man that got, he was in a boat and it kind of, I don't know, he ended up out of the boat. And um, he was out at sea <laughs> for a day and a night and half of another day, floating, trying to drown. <laughs> but his body and his mind wouldn't let him. He wasn't afraid. He was like, just drown and get it over with. He couldn't drown. But if you get fear, <laughs> you're going down. You can't panic. It's the same thing with faith. We can't allow fear, doubt, or unbelief. Amen? That can't be a part of the equation because of, what, because of the word of God and what the word of God says. If anyone doubts, amen? He's all over the place. If anybody doubts, but if, if you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and stable all he does. Just like Jesus said. Where's your faith? Why are you so afraid? How many times Jesus said, one of the things that Jesus, I'm saying Jesus didn't complain about anything, except for a lack of faith. If you read through the word, he'd say, how long do I got to put up with you suckers? It's like, God, Father, how long must I dwell with this lack of faith? Amen. But Jesus said here to the, you're supposed to speak. You're supposed to speak. You're supposed to say something with your mouth to that mountain. And how can you have boldness and courage to speak to a mountain and believe it's going to move? Because God said so in his word. It has nothing to do with the family you were raised in. Nothing to do with the denomination. It has nothing to do with age or gender that there's only two. <laughs> it has nothing to do with anything except for what God said in his word. If, this, if a person, a human being, will not doubt in his heart, your head could be mixed up but you know in your heart that God is going to do something big don't doubt in your heart but believe that what they say will happen it will be done for them amen Jesus these are red letters Jesus is trying to get something across because as long as we are in this life we will have trouble Another, didn't Jesus say that as long as we're in this life we're going to have trouble what was he saying? As long as you're in this life, you will have mountains. Same thing. That's what he's saying. You're going to have mountains. You're going to have anthills. You're going to have molehills. And you're going to have mountains. And you better learn how to get rid of them. Because if you don't get rid of the mountain, nobody else is going to do it for you. Your mama can't. Your auntie can't. Your cousins can't. Your pastor won't. <laughs> Because we have a free will. God has given us a free will in order to stand up against mountains. Stand up against, against what seems to be impossible. If your upkeep exceeds your income, your, no, if your outgo exceeds your income, your upkeep will be your downfall. <laughs> but you can speak to that mountain and switch it around. Amen? And God says this for a very specific person, for a very specific reason, because the children of the living God absolutely must live by faith. Faith in what? Faith in what God says. Faith, that's where Eve messed up. She didn't have faith in what God said. She had more faith in what the devil said to her instead of what God had already told her. You go through from beginning to end. Look at Revelations if you don't mind getting a little. <laughs> don't get scared. Because if you look at the end, if you look at the very, very end, oh, look, we win. <laughs> we win. So it, it, it's, ir it's irrelevant from the beginning to the end. The, when people fail is because they didn't trust what God said. Just like... When, when God told Moses to send spies into the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey, 
They sent him into the promised land. So Moses got him some boys together and they went over there. And, and Joshua and Caleb were the only two that had a good report. They came back and they were like, let's go in. And everybody else started screaming and crying. We can't go in. We look like giants. Or you could say, we look like mom. <laughs> I mean, they, we look like grasshoppers. They look like, they look like giants to them. But they look like mountains to them. We can't move those mountains. So God waited till an opportune time to swallow up all the, those doubt and unbelievers into the earth. And he let Joshua and Caleb go across in the promised land with those that, what, that were determined to believe. Just believe what God said. God said they could surely go in there and take it over. It's theirs. But they got there and they looked like, they look like mountains. <laughs> we look like grasshoppers. They look like mountains. And it's like, who told you that? Who told you that you look like grasshoppers to them? <laughs> Where are you getting your information? It's all in what you listen to. It's all in what you listen to outside of God's word. It's all, everything, all of it is what we listen to outside of God's word. Because we can have what God said in his word that we can have. Amen? Doesn't that get you excited? To know that all you gotta do is believe in your heart that God's word is true and speak it and it will be done. But there is one contingency on here. It says, when you stand praying, if you hold anything, anything <laughs> against anyone, <laughs> all-inclusive, <laughs> if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Faith without love ain't going to work because faith works by love. Amen? Our faith in God's word works by his love. Isn't that beautiful? Aren't you glad that he let us know and that we didn't have to try to figure this out on our own? He just told us that faith works by love. In 1 Corinthians 16, 14, it says, let all that you do be done in love. This whole book is a book of love because God is love and this is God's book. You can't have holiness without love. Amen. You can't have holiness without love and you will not have love without holiness. Holiness, that means you, you have made a decision that your life is for God alone. Amen. Hallelujah. In, in 1 John 4, 8, it says, anyone who does not love does not know God. Because God is love. In 1 Peter 4, 8, it says, above all, keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sins. Whose sins do they cover? The one that's loving. <laughs> Amen. You, you cover up your own sin by being loving. What does that mean? Because, you know, we all, we all can say things and do things that are not, that are just subpar from what a child of God should say or should do. And everybody said, we can all be subpar when it comes to walking in love. But when we make a decision to walk in love, we're covering over a multitude of sin. People won't even know <laughs> because you just act so nice and you just be loving and kind. And people like, like Brother Hagen said that, you know, his kids, you know, they were like, oh, the people at church are just so loving and kind. And he says their kids thought that, that the, all the people at the church were sprouting wings because they were like angels. He says he didn't know, they didn't know it was just their shoulder blades. <laughs> <laughs> I 
In 1 Corinthians 13, 13, it says, So now faith, hope, and love abide. These three. But the greatest of these, the greatest is love. Amen. You can have faith to take down a whole grand, grand Canyon, the Rockies. The, you can cast down any mountain range, but if you don't have love, it's nothing. It's just tinny. Amen. In Colossians 3.14, it says, And above all these put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. All the good graces and mercies and, and talents and ability and your service, everything to God must be woven together in love. Amen. Hallelujah. In 1 John 4, 19, it says, we love because he first loved us. Amen. So we just perpetuate what God has done for us and towards us, we just perpetuate it towards others. Amen. Because love covers over a multitude of nasty. <laughs> Amen. Amen. In 1 John 4, 18, it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. <laughs> oh my gosh, did you hear that? It says, there is no fear in love. And so when Jesus said to the disciples, and he's saying the same thing to his church, why are you so afraid? Their love was not made perfect. Amen? Amen. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love. It's like, <laughs> you ever play these games? What, what, what is that game? Uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Like if you got to the certain place, all of a sudden he was in this blue bubble and he was like undefeatable. He could go really fast and run over all of these things. And I didn't really play. I watched Chase play. <laughs> And he would be supercharged and he would just be really fast. Well, that's what love is. We're in the love bubble. <laughs> Amen. There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear for fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not been, not been perfected in love. So we've got to, as we're working on our faith, we've got to be working on our love. As we're working on our knowledge of the things of God, working on healing, we're working on love. The one ingredient that is included in everything is love. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. In Romans 5, 8, it says, But God shows his love for us, and while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more should we lay down our lives and love one another, pray for one another, esteem one another, honor one another, amen? As God has, we, we are just, we're just lovers of mankind, amen? Because faith works by love. We want to take some mountains down, we got to make sure we're walking in love. I know a lot of times when you hear messages like this, it's so awesome. Uh, and you could probably think of somebody that you wish was here right now. <laughs> you know, you're like, oh, this would be a great message for so-and-so. So-and-so really needs to hear this message. And this is a message for everybody. But this message is for whoever is sitting in, in your seat right now. <laughs> and everybody said, amen, hallelujah. Because God wants us to be able to, to take authority over those things that are standing between us and the God kind of life, which was health and healing and wholeness and prosperity and, and goodness and, and, and favor and all the things that God has already paid for us to walk in. And everybody said, amen, hallelujah. So all we got to do is with our, with our wills, decide we're going to walk in love and we're going to be people of faith, and we're going to stand up against the enemy. Amen. And everybody said, amen. It's imperative that we get this just few things 
hope, faith, and love. Get these things down. Amen. And know that we already have been given the authority of God to take down mountains. We have been given authority by God to speak to those things that are standing between us and the God kind of life. And everybody said, amen. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. <clears throat> um, that sounded like I was all prepared for that, wasn't it? I was flying by the seat of my pants. I had, um, it's, I mean, I always have a sermon, two, three, and I always try to go with one that's kind of rising to the top and, you know, whatever. But when we were worshiping God, the Lord, I don't even know what the scripture was. The first thing I gave, <laughs> gave me a scripture and he said, oh, start on. He said, just let them know that they can't do anything to make me love them anymore. <laughs> that's what he said. They can't do anything to make me love them anymore. And I go, okay, what's next? <laughs> like, which one? Okay, which one do you want to go with? <laughs> I he goes, well, just tell them that, and then we'll go from there. <laughs> he says, we'll just go from there. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's called a gift. <laughs> Amen. Of God. God is so good. He loves his people. He wants to reach them day in and day out. Amen.